Let's see who's going to be in the boats for that first Varsity 8 race. Dartmouth on your left, Syracuse on your right. Remember, winner of this race takes home that Packard Cup 1 through 8 with a coxswain at the bottom. Joe, I know you're looking at the stroke seat today for both teams. I am. Uh, Limeister in for Syracuse. He's got some solid experience in the uh, stroke seat. Uh, what's also interesting for Dartmouth is uh, they moved the three-man from the first varsity, Evan Dwinell, up into the stroke seat. A couple of changes there. One other change, Greg Bauerfeld has been moved into the varsity from the JV. I know Coach Reichman was looking for a little more smoothness in this technique, and hopefully that'll, that'll pay off. All right, Dartmouth number 10 in the country, Syracuse number 9. Packard Cup on the line for the 59th time. Let's go down with John Nicholson for the race. John, go ahead. 40 degrees here in Syracuse out on Onondaga Lake. A very light rain wind out of the west-northwest at just about three miles an hour. Very light headwind they'll be rowing into. A little bit of a ripple here in the lake, but pretty pretty smooth, all things considered. As Dave Rashman, the head coach of Syracuse, would say, practically perfect Syracuse rowing. Referee Larry Laszlo with the start. Attention, go, and we have a start. Syracuse closest to us as you watch. Dartmouth in the far lane. Orange and green uh, going against one another. Syracuse is at 43 strokes a minute off the start. Maybe has a little bit of a deck now. 46 for Dartmouth. Both crews rowing smoothly. Syracuse with a slight edge. Dartmouth keeps coming back with each successive strokes. They'll settle in another few strokes down to their racing pace. And we'll head out to the first 500 meter mark. Syracuse now down to 40 strokes a minute, still pretty high. And Dartmouth is down to 39, so they're getting close to the settle, if not into it already. Syracuse with just a little bit of a lead, maybe a bow ball. Crews look relatively smooth going into this headwind. This first varsity race, this for the Packard Trophy. Syracuse now settling at 38 strokes a minute. Kyle Leimeister, the starboard stroke. That means the oar is on Coxon's right. Dartmouth at 38 and a half. Dartmouth with the more traditionally port stroke. As we pass 500 meters gone in a minute and 25 seconds. Crews just about dead even. Syracuse maybe has a deck at best. Let's see who's got to move in him now. Is the big green trying to move back up and see if they can get ahead of the orange. These teams very easy matched based on their performances so far this year. Syracuse has wins against Wisconsin and Cornell and Navy and yesterday against Columbia. Both boats now rowing at 37 strokes a minute into this headwind, and Dartmouth now is coming up even with Syracuse as we approach the breakwater just a few strokes away from now. The water will get even smoother in there, and you might look for a move as they close up on the halfway point, 1,000 meters to go. Both crews rowing smoothly. Dartmouth now maybe with a bow ball lead from our angle as we get behind me here in the launch. Syracuse will be coming first underneath the Thruway Bridge. And then the Liverpool Long Branch Road Bridge. Dartmouth with a seat lead now over Syracuse as we approach the halfway point. Halfway down the course. 2.52 for Dartmouth. Two minutes, 52 seconds. Dartmouth now looks like it's making a bit of a move and opening up. Maybe a half length now from our point of view. Correction, only about a seat for Dartmouth. This will be a fight to the finish, as Joe Peduta predicted before we started the race. Nice smooth water now underneath the throughway bridge and coming up on Long Branch. Dartmouth on the outside as we come up ahead toward the Syracuse Boathouse. Syracuse, of course, in orange on the inside. Dartmouth got a little bit of a lead. Let's see where Syracuse will try to make a move. Syracuse, 38 strokes a minute now. And Dartmouth now has a three-seat lead at 37. 
Dartmouth understroking Syracuse. Coming up on 500 to go. Dartmouth maintaining the lead. Syracuse looking for some strength. Dartmouth still with the lead. Up ahead of us is the John Glenn Boulevard Bridge just before the finish. Syracuse is up to 39 strokes a minute, but not making any headway into the big green lead. A lot of splashing here. Dartmouth is up at 41 already, practically. Just as Joe Paduta said before this race began, See who really wants it now. Who's going to dig down for those last few strokes? Zach Vlahandres looks across from Syracuse to Dartmouth both. Just let me know. It looks like Dartmouth is still maintaining a little bit of a lead here as we're coming into the last uh, 15 or 20 strokes. Looks like Dartmouth's been able to hold off Syracuse. However, we're going to have to wait for a call from the finish as this is going to be extremely close. From the angle we have here, it does look like Dartmouth may be the winner, but we're looking at the finish line coming through. Wait a minute, Syracuse just pressed on ahead. It is too close to call from here. Syracuse is, looks like Syracuse has got the advantage here with a terrific sprint coming out. I'm going to have to give this one to Syracuse by maybe four or five seats as they approach the finish line, and it appears that the Syracuse don't have the angle exactly here. Terrific finish from both crews. We were looking for this to be an extremely tight race, and boy, it was. Waiting for the official call from the finish line, and we'll update you as soon as we get that. What a terrific race from both crews. Wow, so Syracuse with the monster kick down the stretch there, Joe. How about that finish by the Cuse? Unbelievable. So both crews, having lost yesterday, obviously came in here just about as hungry as they could possibly be. We saw Dartmouth go out a little bit early on. Both crews rowing very efficiently as they were coming down the course. Dartmouth right, right here, about 600 meters to go, had about three or four seats of a lead. And then Syracuse pressed hard. Limeister we talked about early on. Boy, did he get that rating up to 41, 42 strokes a minute. And it looks like the home crowd here at Syracuse is pretty happy with it. But i got to say, Dartmouth did an unbelievable job all the way through that race. Extremely efficient. I was looking for any issues on the stroke getting, getting uh, sloppy towards the end. Dartmouth looked like it was finishing their strokes just a little bit too early in the sprint, which might have cost them a couple of inches a run per stroke. But, geez, that was terrific racing by, by all crews. Love that drone footage. That was a heck of a race here for our first broadcast ever on ACC Network Extra as Syracuse climbs out of a hole to take down Dartmouth, and the Packard Cup is staying here at Ten Eyck Boathouse in Syracuse. Here's some cheers here as well. I think oh. you're right, Joe. I think the official word has just come down that the Orange have brought home the Packard Cup for the second consecutive season, and that means a lot to this program. Yeah, one thing i got to say, though, do not count Dartmouth out. Dartmouth got on the water April 3rd, several weeks after they normally do. I would expect to see Dartmouth back in the hunt big time at the Eastern Sprints. They are a very good crew. All right, so Syracuse does win this one, though. I in the Packard Cup. We're going to take a short break, come back with us. We'll break down that entire first varsity. We'll show you exactly how the Orange came back to win the Packard Cup and a look at the history of the trophy, which